Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Jones Apollo Binding. I rode this binding at Copper Mountain on a day that a bubble formed over the resort, keeping it in bluebird skies, but you had high winds, chop, chunder, leftover pow, dusting a fresh pow, ice, perfect corduroy, kind of just a mix of everything, and I rode it with my Ride Shadow Band snowboard with my K2 Thraxxus boots. All right, so when it comes to adjustability, there's not a lot on these Jones bindings. You have twist cams on the toe and the heel to lengthen or shorten the straps. You have a forward lean adjustment on the high back that you just twist so that you can move it up or down to give you a little bit more. And then you have the bushings on the bottom, which you can swap out from soft to hard, depending on what your preference actually is. So when it comes to the toe strap, it doesn't have the biggest cutout in there. A snubby nose boot, or a pointy-toed one will fit in there better than a full-on blunted one. It's very minimal design. It does have some grip texture on the inside to just grip over it. At the end of the day, it's basically gonna cup over the toe. You're not really gonna feel anything. With the heel strap, it's a two-piece design, so you have that exoskeleton in the middle, and then you've got a little bit more give on the outside with it being a little stiffer in the middle of this strap, it's designed to give you precision and power while reducing any padding or excess material. That means that your boots padding will provide the padding for your instep and ankle, but the ankle strap itself is just gonna lock you in and give you power. One thing I noticed with these ratchets was there was a little bit of play in there. Not a lot, but it was enough that I was like, ooh, that doesn't feel natural. Could be that they're samples, just could be that they were used a bunch and they broke in. You do have a one finger quick release on the heel ratchet. It does work. These do climb pretty well. You don't have to worry about it. You can torque them. I don't like the fact that the toe ratchet isn't uniform with the heel one. You're missing that one finger quick release, which means you're basically pinching down and pulling. It's not uniform. Otherwise, these ratchets stayed locked in. They never slipped. I never had any real problems with them. Just noticed there was a little bit of play to it. The high back is aggressive. It's stiff, it's rigid. It does have that wing and that cutout, which lets you when you're on a heel side carve push into it. The forward lean on these when it's set to zero is pretty aggressive as well. You will notice that. You do have a forward lean dial that you can twist and really crank these things if that's your thing. I don't know who's cranking it that much, but there are people out there. So if you like power and performance from your high back, this is definitely one that has it. This is a stiff, rigid binding. The only lateral play you're gonna get from the heel strap is where the hinge is on it. It has a little bit of give, not enough to really matter. This binding is designed for straight raw power and hard charging, and you'll feel that. You can just feel when you wanna go toe to heel, that skate tech is working. It's driving the power down into your toe edge and your heel edge. And when you're throwing your body weight on the outside or the inside of the binding, you're getting a ton of lateral power. This binding's assertive. And by that, I mean, you feel some of that chatter coming up underneath from that hanger, from the skate tech, but the foot pad does provide solid dampening. So you will get a little bit of chatter with it, but more than anything, you're just gonna feel the power of this binding as you transition from toe to heel and you steer your snowboard. Who's this binding for? The free ride charger, obviously. So realistically, the only reason I rode this binding was to check out that toe strap. I heard it was redesigned. I wanted to see if it gripped a little bit better. It did. Otherwise, this is a straight powerhouse binding that's assertive. You can just really, really charge with it. So if that's your thing, go for it. If it's not, probably wanna look elsewhere. Comparable bindings, the Nidecker Kon CX, the Ride A10, the Union Atlas FC. This has been my review of the Jones Apollo. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own a pair? Are you gonna buy a pair? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this binding. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you wanna support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Averin Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video. Thank mm -hmm. you.